Okay, I want to start by asking you guys a question. How many of you have had to fill out, does this work? How many of you have had to fill out some sort of web form where you've been asked to read this distorted sequence of characters? Good. How many of you found it really, really annoying? Outstanding, okay. Well, I invented that. Uh, that thing is called a CAPTCHA, and the reason is there is to make sure that you, the entity filling out the form, are actually a human and not some sort of computer program that was written to submit the form millions of times. And the reason it works is because humans, at least non-visually impaired humans, have no trouble reading these distorted characters, whereas computer programs can't do it as well yet. So for example, in the case of Ticketmaster, the reason you have to type these distorted characters was, is to make sure that scalpers cannot write programs to obtain millions of tickets, sort of two at a time. Now, CAPTCHAs are used all over the internet, uh, they're, they're used so often, it turns out that approximately 200 million of these are typed every day by people around the world. Now, when I first heard this number, I was quite proud of myself. I thought, look at the impact that my work has had. Uh, but then I started feeling bad. See, here's the thing, each time you type one of these, not only is it super annoying, but also you waste about 10 seconds of your time. And if you multiply 10 seconds by 200 million, you get that humanity as a whole is wasting about 500,000 hours every day typing these annoying CAPTCHAs. Okay, so, so then I started feeling bad. Uh, <laughs> And then I'd start, but then I started thinking, well, is there any way in which we can use this effort for something that is good for humanity? See, here's the thing. During those 10 seconds while you're typing a CAPTCHA, your brain is doing something amazing. Your brain is doing something that computers cannot yet do. So can we make good use of that? And the answer to that turned out to be yes, and this is what we did after the original CAPTCHA. Uh, this is a project called ReCAPTCHA, uh, which we turned into a company that later was acquired by Google. Uh, but let me tell you what that what, what that did. So, so the idea is nowadays, while you're typing a CAPTCHA, not only are you authenticating yourself as a human, but also you're helping us to digitize books. Okay, let me explain how that works. So there's a lot of projects out there trying to digitize books. So Google, for example, has a project like that. Amazon's trying to digitize all, of, all the books to put them in the Kindle. And basically the way this works is you start with a, a physical book. You, you've seen those things, like, like, like a book, right? Okay, so you start with that, and then you scan it. Now, scanning a book is like taking a digital photograph of every page of the book. It gives you an image for every page of the book. The next step in the process is that the computer needs to be able to decipher all of the words in those images. That's done using a technology called OCR for optical character recognition. The problem with OCR is that it's not perfect, especially for older books where the computer cannot, uh, where the ink has faded, the computer cannot recognize a lot of the words. Uh, for things that were written more than 50 years ago, the computer cannot recognize about 30% of the words. So what we're doing now is we're taking all of the words that the computer cannot recognize, and we're getting people to read them for us while they type a CAPTCHA on the internet. So next time you type a CAPTCHA, those words that you're typing are actually words that are coming directly from books that are being digitized that the computer cannot recognize. And we're using what you're entering to help digitize books. Now, the reason there are now two words instead of one is, see, for one of the words is one for which the system already knows the answer, and we use that to figure out whether you're a human. And then the other word is a brand new word, one for which the system doesn't know the answer. We don't tell you which one's which. And we say, please type both words. And if you type the correct answer for the one for which the system already knew the answer, we assume you're a human. And we also get some confidence that you type the other word correctly. And if we repeat this process to like 10 different people and all of them agree on what the new word is, we get one more word digitized with very high probability. This is basically how this works. Um, it turns out this is pretty successful. We, we're doing about 100 million words a day. Uh, which is the equivalent of about two and a half million books a year, all being digitized one word at a time by just having people type CAPTCHAs on the internet. Now, since we're doing so many words, uh, funny things can happen, and this is especially true because see now we're giving people two randomly chosen words right next to each other, so funny things can happen. So for example, uh, we showed this, it's the word Christians, uh, there's nothing wrong with this word, but if you put it along with another randomly chosen word, bad things can happen, so for example, we showed this. <laughs> Okay, so it's pretty bad. Um, but it's even worse because, see, it turns out this, this system is used in literally millions of websites. Uh, it turns out that the particular website where we show this actually happened to be called the Embassy of the Kingdom of God. <laughs> Whoops. Here's another really bad one. JohnEdwards.com. Uh, and here's, here's one that actually I just got about a, a couple of weeks ago, which is pretty funny. This is uh, Mitt Romney. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> so we go around insulting people left and right, and there's not much we can do because, see, for one of the words, we don't actually know what it says, so there's not much we can do to filter it. But it's not just insults. Um, it's also interesting stuff that can happen. Um, and this actually has, a, has given rise to a new internet phenomenon, uh, 
um, in which tens of thousands of people have participated, which is something called CAPTCHA art. Uh, let me explain how this works. So uh, this, this is, this is it, it's pretty popular, and here's how it works. Imagine you're surfing the internet and you suddenly see a CAPTCHA that you think is someone in, somewhat interesting, like this one. Okay? What you're supposed to do is you're supposed to take a screenshot of it, then, you're, of course, you're supposed to type it because then you help us digitize books, so please type it. Uh, but then after taking a screenshot, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to draw a picture that is related to this, okay, like this. <laughs> this is an example of CAPTCHA art. So there's tens of thousands of these. Uh, some of them uh, are cute, like this one. <laughs> some of them are funnier, like this one. And some other ones, uh, like paleontological schwizzle, they contain Snoop Dogg. <laughs> okay, now, this is my favorite number of the whole recapture project. Um, this is the total number, so 950 million, this is the total number of distinct people that have ever helped us digitize at least one word out of a book through recapture. So over 10% of the world's population has helped us digitize at least one word, one word out of a book through recapture. And it is numbers like these that motivate my work, and in particular, uh, the, the, the specific question that motivates my work is the following. If you look at humanity's really large-scale achieve, achievements, these really big things that humanity has done, the historical mega-projects like building the pyramids of Egypt, or the Panama Canal, or putting a man on the moon, there's a curious fact about them, and it is that all of them were done with about the same number of people. All of them were done with about 100,000 people. And the reason for that is because before the internet, coordinating more than 100,000 people was essentially impossible. But see, now with the internet, I've just shown you a project where we've gotten 950 million people to collaborate to digitize human knowledge. So the question that motivates my work is, if we can put a man on the moon, what can we do? If we can put a man on the moon with 100,000, what can we do with 100 million? Now, based on this question, I, I started a bunch, of different quest, a bunch of different projects. Let me tell you very quickly about the one that I'm currently working on. It's a project called Duolingo. Uh, and it started with this question. The question is, how do we get 100 million people translating the web into every major language for free? Okay, there's a lot of things to say about this question. First of all, translating the web. So right now, the, the web is partitioned into multiple languages. So uh, more than 50% of it is written in English, and if you don't know English, you can't access it, but there's also parts in Spanish and Italian, et cetera. If you don't know those parts, you can't access it. So I would like to translate all of the web into every major language. This is what I would like to do. Now, when we first started working on this, um, we thought, well, why can't we use computers to do this? I mean, for example, Google has Google Translate. It's gotten uh, a lot better over time. So the question is, why can't we use Google Translate to just translate all the one? The problem is that that doesn't work very well yet, and it's probably not going to for the next 20 to 30 years. Okay, it's, it's getting better, but it's not that great. So for example, you would never see a book being translated by Google Translate and being sold. Now, just to show you uh, how interesting it can get when you get stuff translated using computers, let me just show you something that we saw um, in a forum. It was a, a a forum asking questions about Java programming, and it's something that was translated from Japanese into English, and I'm just gonna let you read it. Uh, so it, it just starts by saying, I'm sorry, this is a computer translation. Um, uh, by the way, remember, this is, it, this is supposed to be a question about programming. In particular, this is supposed to be a question about Java programming, okay? Uh, so here comes the preamble to the question. Okay. Uh, here comes the first part of the question. Here comes my favorite part of the question. <laughs> and here's my favorite part of the whole post. <laughs> okay, so we, we can't use computers, so we need people in order to translate the web. And of course, if we want to translate all the web, we can't do it with 100 people or 50 people uh, or even 1,000 people. We literally need millions of people to help translate the whole web. And of course, if we're going to use millions of people to help translate the whole web, I can't quite pay them to do so. So the question is, how can we get 100 million people translating the web into every major language for free? Okay, so this is what we wanted to do. Now, when we started working on this, we pretty quickly got stuck because we realized there's two pretty major obstacles if this is what we want to do. The first one is a lack of bilinguals. See, the fraction of the world that is bilingual enough to help us translate the web is actually quite small. And if, if I need 100 million of them, that's pretty hard. Uh, the second problem was a lack of motivation. How are we going to get millions of people to translate the web for free. This is something that you normally have to pay people to do. So we were stuck on these two problems until actually we realized there's a way to solve both of these two problems with the same solution. There's a way to kill two birds with one stone. 
and that is by transforming language translation into something that millions of people want to do, and that also helps with the problem of lack of bilinguals, and that is language education. Okay, so it turns out that today, there are about 1.2 billion people around the world learning a foreign language. People really, really want to learn a foreign language. And it's not just because they're being paid to do so. For example, in the United States alone, there's over 5 million people who've paid over $500 for software to learn a foreign language. So people really, really want to learn a foreign language. So the idea of Duolingo, this new project that I'm working on, is the following. We need a, a massive amount of language translation. That's point number one. Point number two is there's about a billion people learning a new language. And a lot of times when you're learning a new language, if you remember, uh, a lot of the things you're doing is actually translating stuff. That's to learn a new language. So the question is, can we get these people who are learning a new language to do the translation for us for free? That's the idea of Duolingo, and this is what I've been working on. So we actually launched a website called Duolingo um, about three months ago, where the idea is it's a free language learning website. When you go there, you just go there to learn a language. Uh, but the twist is that while you're learning, you're also helping us to translate the web. Okay, now the, let me just have a, about a one minute video explaining how Duolingo works, and then I'll finish. It's a big world out there. Billions of us trying to live, love, prosper, and make sense of our brief time on this planet. Since the dawn of humanity, we've been passing information from one person to another through a common language. Unfortunately, you can't communicate with others without knowing or learning their language first. A similar issue has manifested on the web, where text can be penned in dozens of languages, each of which demands a reader's fluency. We've developed an elegant solution to both problems, a way for you to learn a language for free, while at the same time helping to translate text from the web, enabling a wealth of language-shackled information to be liberated for all of humanity. It's called Duolingo. Here's how it works. Let's say you're a native English speaker who wants to learn Spanish. We start by giving you a sentence from a Spanish website and asking you to translate it. Wait, back up. How can you translate a language you don't know? First, Duolingo only gives you sentences that fit your language level. Beginners get the really simple sentences from the web, and advanced users get the more complex ones. This way, everybody becomes a valuable translator. And second, if you're really lost, you can always see possible translations for words you don't know. Afterwards, Duolingo helps you understand and memorize the words you hovered over through educational examples. You can also vote on the quality of other students' translations, which helps you learn by seeing how others translated the same sentence. And because you create valuable translations while you learn, we return the favor by offering Duolingo completely free of charge. No ads, no hidden fees, no subscriptions, just free. To put the potential benefit of Duolingo into perspective, think about this. If one million people would use Duolingo to learn, the entirety of English Wikipedia could be translated to Spanish in just 80 hours. Duolingo, learn a language while translating the web. Thank you. <laughs>